Okay. Now, we are talking about the formulas. These are actually formulas which are used in business mathematics. Remember business mathematics, our focus will be only on three areas. One, we'll be looking at the profitability, and then we come, we look at the interest, interest, simple interest and compound interest. And then finally, we now come and look at uh, net present value and internal rate of return, which is part of the capital composition or determining the value of the item. So we start with the formulas. Here, there are nine basic business mathematics formulas that we cannot ignore. They are net income formula. Net income, in other books, we talk about net profit. So how do you get the net income? Net income equals to revenue minus expenses. So if you are told determine the net income of the business, in other words, determine the profit of the business, just say net income equals to revenue minus expenses. Accounting equation is another critical formula in accounts. Now, when you talk about accounting equation, this is an equation which tells us the composition of business in terms of assets and equity. So if you want to know the composition of business in terms of assets and equity, then we have the accounting equation. Now, what entails the accounting equation? Assets equals to liabilities plus equity. This is what we call accounting equation. At the same time, you can say equity equals to assets minus liabilities. At the same time, let me just, I think there is something. At the same time, the same formula, you can say liabilities equals to asset minus equity. So these are formulas which are applicable in accounting equation. And the accounting equation gives us the position or the stability of the business. I believe you have heard about at what point do you establish whether the business is stable or not? When do we say that the business is stable? The business is stable when assets are equals to liabilities. That is it. Now, cost of goods sold. What is the formula of cost of goods sold? How do you get the cost of goods sold? Members? Who can give us? Now, other books talk about cost of sales. Yes? Very simple. The cost of goods sold is the beginning inventory or opening stock plus purchases during the period minus ending inventory, which is the closing stock. So this is actually the formula that will guide us in the formation of cost of good sold. Next is break-even point. Now, when you talk about break-even point, it is the point at which, this is the point at which the business is not making profit and the business is not making loss. It is the point at which the business has a zero profit, zero loss. It's normally called zero profit, zero loss point. It is the point of equilibrium. So if you want to get into the break-even point, you want actually to establish at what point you'll be getting into a break-even point. The point whereby there is no profit, there is no loss. This is the point. If you go above this point, you make profit. If you go below this point, you make loss. How do you get that? This is the formula. Break-even point equals to fixed cost divided by sell price per unit minus variable cost per unit. This gives us what you call break-even point. If you want to get a break-even point in units, which I'm not given here, but if you want to get a break-even point per unit, 
you just say break even point in bracket no in price not in units in in price this is actually break even point in units so break even point in price equals to break even point units time is selling price per unit gives you the break even point in terms of price now we come to another session which is to establish the ratios critical in determining the liquidity of the business now in business generally for you to analyze the behaviors of a business for you to analyze how the business is behaving in terms of liquidity in terms of solvency in terms of marketability in terms of um, activity you must understand these critical ratios now here we have just picked the critical ratios but there are several ratios which gives us the information about the behavior of a business so you can establish the behavior of a business in terms of profitability marketability liquidity and capital composition but i want us to just look at the few we have current ratio how do you get the current ratio current ratio equals to current asset divided by current liability now we say the business is stable or ideal when this ratio is 2 is to 1 are you getting that so the ratio is ideal when 2 is to 1 in other words we are saying two current assets and one current liability so you can use one current asset to pay one current liability and you still remain with one current asset now that is when your liquidity is good for the business profit margin formula now this ratio is necessary in identifying the profitability of the business the performance of the business so if you want to know how the business is performing then you test what you call profitability ratio now how do you get the profitability ratio profit profit margin equals to net income divided by revenue times 100 now let me say this here you might be talking about revenue but assuming that you are given sales assuming that you have profit net profit then you'll be using the net profit divided by sales times 100 are we together now return on investment ratio now return on investment ratio the aim of preparing this ratio is to establish what are you getting out of what you have invested in the business as an investor so the people who are interested with this ratio are actually the investors their aim is to establish what is their interest what are they getting after investing their capital in the business so return on investment equals to investment gain minus cost of investment divided by cost of investment times 100 investment gain minus cost of investment divided by cost of investment times 100 now there is another formula i believe you are writing this there is another formula so return on investment equals to net profit after tax divided by capital employed times 100 now that's how you get the return on investment ratio the higher the ratio the better it is markup formula now markup formula gives us actually the percentage markup formula gives us the percentage of the net profit so revenue minus cost of goods sold divided by cost of goods sold times 100 markup percentage in other words you're almost giving us the cross profit ratio so the markup percentage is the cross profit ratio so you need to identify and get the difference between markup percentage and profit margin 
Markup percentage is the difference between So the difference between markup percentage and the profit margin. Profit margin is after expenses. Markup percentage is before expenses. That is a simple analysis that can help you understand. So profit margin is after expenses. Markup percentage is before expenses. Now this is what we call cross profit. Is that okay? Now, selling price using markup is cost of goods sold times markup percentage plus cost of good sold. Now, in other words, you are actually given a question and you need to establish what is the selling price. So, when you are given the markup price in terms of percentage, then your business is to just say cost of goods sold times markup percentage plus cost of good sold. I hope you are getting that. Huh? So assuming the question requires you to prepare the selling price and you have been given the markup price and you have the cost of good sold, your business is just to use the formula where cost of good sold equals to so where COGS is cost of good sold. Inventory shrinkage formula now inventory shrinkage formula is a formula which tells us how the inventory has actually reduced so inventory shrinkage formula equals to recorded inventory minus actual inventory divided by recorded inventory times 100 so if you want to get the shrinkage shrinkage means reduced so recorded inventory minus the actual inventory now when you go to the store remember we are talking about um, accounting for stock so when you are accounting for stock you need to tell us what is in the store what was in the store so what was in the store is recorded minus what is in the store actual inventory divided by what was in the store that gives us the inventory shrinkage formula any question?